Hi, this is Ron Felming with Crop Fertility Services here to discuss harrowing and emerged soybeans. The first thing you're going to notice uh, as we get prepared to go into the field is that we're going to bring the tines forward, meaning they're going to be pushing the point. Uh, we don't want a whole lot of pulling action here. Uh, we just want a lot of scratching action, disturbing the soil, but not pulling in too deep to that we're messing up the soybean roots. Uh, the other thing you're going to notice is we're going to apply up pressure on the parallel linkage. And what that does is it allows it us to only go in and disturb about the top, we'll say quarter to a half an inch of soil. The beans shown here are two to three inches in height and we are running at about two to three miles an hour. Under ideal conditions, you can probably get in there at about two inches tall, but you're probably doing even less in terms of speed. Uh, you don't want to get in too early. You might damage the cotyledons and the crop just won't be able to handle that. Um, but showing here, we are hitting a couple of leaves, but nothing too major. Uh, the entire ground is being scratched, meaning you're getting all those white root hairs that are just coming up and you're doing very minimal damage to the crop. Um, it's about the best you can hope for and it's going to do you wonders when you get into cultivating so you're not fighting these weeds that are just as tall as the soybeans. Weeds that are best controlled by tine weeders are small seeded broad leaves like your pigweed, your lamb's quarter, your mustard, uh, and your annual grasses. Anything that starts coming up and the very top of the soil profile is liable to get hit with the tines or buried once they've just started emerging which essentially takes out their energy reserves just trying to get out of the soil. Large seeded broad leaves and perennial grasses are some of the hardest weeds to kill. We're talking things like cocklebird, giant ragweed, um, those things are a lot harder to kill in general and the tine weeder will do a good job at either hitting the shoot, which is a great way to actually kill these, uh, but otherwise they do bury them and or just knock them back so that it takes them time to recover while your beans grow ahead of them, giving them a competitive advantage. The Hudson Bickler Time Weeder offers many advantages over its competitors. Um, the biggest one is the hydraulic down pressure, which as you can tell, we can bring the basket up and bring the tines forward. Uh, you cannot do that with any other tine weeder. Um, and that allows us to get more of this scratching action that you're noticing rather than more of a pulling action, which would actually harm the beans way more than what we are doing here. Um, the other thing is, is there's 48 tines per basket, uh, which allows the optimum trash flow, which you can also notice here, but also it um, still virtually hits all of the soil. Hydraulic tine adjust is standard on all of their models. Tine weeding is often not very gratifying because you don't really get to see what you're doing and you're going a lot slower than say what you would do with a rotary hoe, but it does do a lot of damage to emerging weeds and killing them when they're small is a lot easier than killing them when they're large. Um, so as you can see right here, that's all you're doing. That was a weed there. If you have any other questions about tine weeders or you're interested in purchasing one, please give me a call, 612-309-7522. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.